Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. FlexWatt heat tape can offer the do-it-yourself herper a convenient and economical solution for their reptile heating needs. Today I want to show you how I install FlexWatt heat tape and I'm going to give you some practical tips for making the installation as smooth as possible. I'm going to install some heat tape in this baby boa rack that I talked about in a video a couple weeks ago. And this will help me get ready for my baby boa season, which I hope to be kicking into full gear in the early summer. First, a brief but necessary disclaimer. FlexWatt heat tape operates on household current that is 120 volts of electricity. 120 volts is powerful enough to seriously injure or even kill a human. So do not attempt to do any of the procedures that I'm about to show you unless you're completely comfortable and you've taken appropriate safety precautions. If you don't want to take the risk of wiring your own heat tape, there are a number of pre-wired heat tape solutions available on the market and I advise you to pursue that option instead. If you haven't seen FlexWatt heat tape before, I just want to show you what this stuff looks like. So it comes in several different widths. So this is the 6 inch, inch width. This is the 11 inch, 11 inch width. I think they also have a, like a 3 and a 4 inch width. And it comes in these sheets and you can get it as long as you want. I think up to like 25 feet. But you order the heat tape and then you can cut it to the custom length that you want. So I've pre-measured, and for this particular rack, I'm going to need 32 and a half inch long sheet. So I've actually pre-cut one of them. Um, now I'm going to cut the other one. So I've actually marked on this heat tape exactly where I need to cut. And you can see there's these black bars. And so that's what generates the heat. You apply electricity to these metal these silver metal bars and the electricity flows this way and it heats up the heating element in between. It's made up by these black bars. And so when you're cutting this stuff, you have to be really careful because you have to cut right in between the black bars where the white area is. And if you cut into the black bars, you're going to ruin it and you have to actually trim that piece. So you can see I've pre-measured and I put in Sharpie, I've noted where I'm going to cut. So right now I'm going to just really carefully cut this piece and measure and cut carefully because if you mess it up, there's no going back. Almost there. Oh, it's a lot easier to cut this stuff when the camera's not running. Okay, so that's a 32 and a half inch sheet that I'm going to use for one shelf of this rack. So I'll put that aside. You can see here I also, this is the 11 inch width. And this stuff I use for my larger racks. I believe this is 20 watts per foot. The six inch width is uh, nine watts per foot. But it's a relatively convenient product because you can cut it to whatever size you want. It's relatively inexpensive. I think the 11 inch is like $3.60 a foot. The, this stuff, the six inch is like $3 a foot. Um, and then you have to install the electric wires yourself. So they have these little clippy sets and for each electric connection, you need these two little metal clips that are going to clip onto these bars, the silver bar, which conducts electricity. And then you're going to need these little covers. So there are these little plastic covers. And you need a, a male and a female end. And they clip together. And they basically isolate the electricity so you don't get electrocuted when you touch it. So again, you have to be really careful with this stuff, um, both because of the obvious potential risk because of the electricity, and when you're setting it up, you really only get one chance. If you cut it wrong, it's basically you have to trim it and 
basically start over. If you put these clips on wrong, you can't get them off. So it takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so now I have two 32 and a half inch lengths, six inches by 32 and a half inches. The width of these shelves, or the length of these shelves is 34 inches. So I'm gonna leave myself about an inch and a half and that will allow room for the clips to hang over. And with this particular rack, I have four of these uh, six liter Sterilite tubs. You can see there's a little bit of wiggle room here. I made it a little bit bigger. So that will allow me room for the clips and um, a little bit of wiggle room as far as the size of the heat tape, just for some flexibility. So the first thing that you have to do is the, you have to insulate the ends where these little metal conductor bars are. Okay, one side we're going to put the electric wires on, but the other side we need to cover with this electrical tape. So you just put a little piece of electrical tape like that and trim it. And we're going to do the same for the other side. And then I'm going to just fold it over like that. And again, this is critical because we don't want these live ends sticking out or you could end up electrocuting yourself. Now I'm going to real quickly do it for the other piece. Okay, so both of these pieces, we have one end insulated and the other end is where we're going to attach our electric wires. And so as far as the electric wires, you can go to your hardware store and buy wire, you can buy plugs, um, and you can hook it to the plug. But I find the easiest thing is just to buy an inexpensive extension cord and use that as a cord. So the shortest extension cord is about, it's a six foot extension cord that you can buy for a few dollars. And we only want the plug end. So I'm actually going to take this part and cut it right off like that. Okay, And so this is what I'm going to use as my electric wire. And for today, I'm going to actually wire this up in a parallel circuit. So I'm going to control two of these heat tapes with the one wire. And I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the two wires from the extension cord. So I'm just gently going to cut down in the middle of that and then I'm just going to gently pull it apart. And you only need to spread it enough so that you'll be able to hook the wires to the clips that attach to the uh, conductor bars and the heat tape. So this is going to go like this, okay? So now I need to strip the wires and you basically just strip off about a half inch or so. Just gently cut around with your scissor like that. Okay. And if you have good wire strippers, you don't need to do this with the scissors. But I have these cheap wire strippers that only cost me a dollar. So I actually have to pre-cut them. And then I have to pull off the plastic coating of the wire. Okay, so I have exposed the copper. And I'm going to do that for the other side now. Okay, so now we have the copper exposed. So that's one wire. So because I'm going to be hooking two of these heat tapes to the one wire, I need another wire that's going to connect from the one heat tape to the other. And again, I'm setting this up in a parallel circuit. Um, basically, I'm going to have one heat tape on this shelf, and then I'm going to have one up here, and I need the wiring to go from the top shelf to the second shelf here. The next step is to attach the wires to the little metal clips. And to do this, 
First I'm going to just twist together the plug wire and the wire that's going to go to the other heat tape. And I just kind of wrap them together like this. Okay. And then I'm going to insert the wire into the end of the clip. Okay, like that. And so in order to put the clips in place, I use these grip tight pliers. And the first thing is to just squeeze at the neck where it's connected to the wire. Actually, I needed an Allen wrench. So now I have my friendly little Allen wrench and I'm going to use it to tighten the grip lock pliers like this. Okay, now I'm going to loosen it. And so it's kind of squeezed in place. Now I'm going to hook up the wire that's going to go to the other side, just as I did for the first one. So just wrap that around like that. And then we're going to Put the clip in there like that. My grip pliers. Tighten. And now I can loosen them up. So there I have the wiring of how I'm going to do my uh, parallel circuit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach the metal clamps onto the flex watt that's going to go on the top shelf. And it's important that you line this up correctly. So you want to line it up so that the little metal piece with the little teeth is right above the silver bar there. Okay, and then I'm gently going to squeeze it in place like that. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Like this. Just make sure it's lined up nice. Remember, you only get one chance with this stuff, so if you do it wrong, you basically have to start with new materials. Okay, so it's in place, but it's not making an electrical connection yet. We have to squeeze the metal bars so the little teeth penetrate the plastic and make electrical contact with this metal conductor bar. And there are a number of ways to do this. You can buy a special tool that they sell, which is pretty expensive. Or I just use these grip pliers and it works quite well for me. So I just put it like that right in the middle. Actually, we're going to have to tighten them up a bit. Put that on there like that. And squeeze. And then I'm going to tighten it with my friendly little Allen wrench. is not being so friendly right now. Okay. Put that in place nice and tight. And I'll loosen it. And I'll usually do this again one or two more times. I just want to make sure that I'm getting as good of a connection as possible and that these little metal teeth are making contact with the electrical conductor bar.
Okay, so that looks pretty good. You can also use a needle nose pliers to kind of squeeze it. I wouldn't recommend using this as your only tool because it's usually you don't get enough force to penetrate the plastic with the little metal teeth. So now I have both of the clips connected. You can see I, they're squeezed nice and tight and hopefully these little metal teeth penetrated and they're not making electrical contact with the conductor bars. So now is the moment of truth. I need to do the test just to make sure that it's hooked up right. And you'll notice we have these potentially live wires, okay? So I repeat, be extremely careful anytime you're plugging this stuff in, okay? I'm gonna make sure that these live ends are not in a place where they could accidentally brush against me. I'm just gonna loop this around like that. Okay, and these are going to be live too. And now I'm going to actually plug it into the wall very carefully. Okay, so the current is flowing now. I'm not going to touch it. I just want to make sure that it's heating up. So I'm going to use this thermometer, this uh, laser thermometer, just to measure the temperature. 81.3, 81.4, Okay, so it's slowly heating up. Just give it a minute. It's weird, this stuff seems to heat up differently in different parts of it. Like here it's up to already 88 degrees. Over here it's 86. Down there it's 86. Actually, it's heating up pretty evenly now. Okay, so it's heated up now up to about 90. And this stuff, if you just let it heat up, it probably gets to about 120 degrees or so. Even hotter if you have pressure on top. It's very important to use a thermostat, which I'll cover in a later episode. Now I'm going to unplug it. Okay, so now the wires aren't live anymore. But the last part is we want to connect the other piece in this parallel circuit and this one's going to go on the top the other one is going to go right below it I'm going to put the other wires that go to the shelf below I'm going to put that into the clip like that and then I'm going to use my vice grips to just carefully squeeze that together You gotta watch your fingers when you're doing this. And then I'm going to use my friendly little Allen wrench to squeeze it tight. Okay, now I'm gonna unsqueeze it. Now I'm going to pause the camera and do the same for the other side. So I have both clips in place, and now I'm going to attach these to the other piece of flex watt heat tape exactly the same way that I demonstrated for the first piece. I've attached the other strip of flex watch in the exact same manner using the metal clips. I clipped them in place with the vice grip and then I plugged it in really carefully to make sure that it was uh, heating up. So the last step is to provide is to attach these little plastic clips and these are what protects you from the electricity that's going to be flowing. And so there's the female end and the male end and they clip together over the metal clip. And it's somewhat tricky to get them lined up right and you have to do it just right because once you clip it you can't unclip it and if you clip it the wrong way it's basically ruined and you have to uh, rip it off and start fresh. So it's a little bit tricky but the way that it works I usually put the male end on the bottom like this and then the female like here on top and then you just line it up carefully and then you push it down like this and you hear the two little snaps okay and it's almost there actually it didn't quite go sometimes I use uh, needle nose pliers Like this, but you just want to line it up 
so that they fit together. Okay, finally got it. It's a little tricky sometimes, but once you get it in a place like this, it's going to protect you from the electricity. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other three clips. I've attached all of the plastic insulator clips and I've tested this and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to use aluminum foil tape to tape it in place on the first and second shelf of this rack. This is the aluminum foil tape. It's used for repair duct work and it's relatively tedious and tricky to work with. I'm going to actually be cutting strips of about a foot in length and I'm going to need six of these for each strip of heat tape. So I've used the foil tape to hold these FlexWatt heat strips in place. Now they're all nice and getting toasty warm and ready to go. And so I'll go ahead and I'll put strips on the remaining three shelves. Just one last note is that you need to use a thermostat when you're using the FlexWatt heat tape as it will get way too hot if you don't have a thermostat. The thermostat is typically set to about 90 degrees for the baby boas. And in a future episode, I'll run you through the types of thermostats I use. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.